Do you like trains as much as I do? How do you feel about GP9s, five in a row, or F units painted in BN green? Hi, this is Burr Stewart, and join me for part 83 of my continuing series of model railroad videos. Bang! And today we're just going to play around with some four axle locomotives. So let's get started. Brian Elchlip brought over five of his locomotives that he's meticulously detailed and weathered. All five of these are GP9s from the Burlington Northern. And we'll scan them all. He adjusted the pitch shift in the Tsunami sound decoder so that the sound is just awesome. Each engine sounding a little different from the other one. We're passing over the Skagit River Bridge. And in just a minute, we'll come up upon the Stillaguamish River Bridge. Isn't that clicking sound great? It comes from the sound decoders. Now we're passing the Stillaguamish River Bridge, a Walther's kit. That pile of logs above the engines is in the Skycomish area, and the yard down below is the Argo Yard and the Seattle Intermodal Terminal. And that's the Lone Star cement plant there in South Seattle. Now here we've entered the Delta Y. And here we're crossing the Snohomish River Bridge and approaching a tunnel into the Everett's Bayside Yard. Some of the GP9s had their air tanks mounted on the roof and they affectionately called them torpedo boats. Well, a few minutes later, I asked Aiden if he would run some loaded ore jennies back up from Seattle to Bellingham staging. So he took the nearest two engines and a beautiful new Northern Pacific caboose, renumbered for the BN, as you see there, and worked his way around the main line until he got up to the Burlington Yard. Here we're coming through the Bayside Yard with those ore jennies. And there is a beautiful F unit on the head. But they're all basically they are. Uh, Looks a little shiny to me. I think we should dull coat that thing. SD70 with. Don't you? More horsepower output. Those loaded wood chip hoppers are going to go into Scott Paper, which is back on the left there. Now keep your eye on the left for something new that's just been developing on the layout. I put a signal in there 
with LEDs to show how the turnouts in the delta Y are aligned. Isn't that cool? Green over red means it's aligned in the straight position. And here we're going back the other direction that we just came from with all those uh, GP units. And I don't know what that family is doing down on the shed there. But I guess it's their business. Still a Guamish River Bridge again. I love these shots with the engine coming through a bridge. Very good. Mount Vernon Station. Skagit River Bridge. Coupler separation. Oops. And on the backdrop there, you'll notice uh, Brian did a little backdrop painting as an experiment to see if we could make it look more three-dimensional. I think it looks a lot better than the other backdrop. Stay tuned for more developments there. I have the headlight on. Well, a few minutes I later, do. we oh, ran yeah. the engines and the caboose back to Interbay as a caboose hop. Here we're approaching the Salmon Bay Bridge in Ballard, Seattle. And Aiden has decided to put his caboose away on the caboose track, which is good practice. So we'll get to watch that operation. First he had to pull all the way through the north ladder and now he's going to back into the caboose track. Bang! Very nice.
Now, of course, the engine terminal is on the opposite side of the main line from the yard, both on the prototype interbay yard and on this model, which just gives us more operating fun. Now he has to go all the way back through the north ladder, out onto the main line, and back into the engine terminal. We have that reefer spotted on the caboose track for supplies like beer and whatever they might need in the caboose. Aiden is like me, he just likes blowing his horn sometimes, whether it makes sense or not. Well, this has been fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And check out the rest of the videos on my channel. In the meantime, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains. <laughs>